Okay, so today is going to be episode two of me playing as my little Paladin gimmick deck. And again, the only one I could really think of because Paladin is not a class I played a ton over the years. I probably played the most of it in Arena. It's like in the bottom middle tier, not like the lowest tier, like Priest and, and Rogue. Notoriously, I just basically never played them ever in the whole history of the game. Even in Arena, whatever, I wouldn't like them. But uh, then next above that would be like Shaman and Paladin, which is kind of the last two that we've done. So the only deck I could really think of that I would find fun or interesting as a good gimmick here uh, is the Exodia one, which maybe at the time was more fun and novel where there weren't too many win conditions like that, like Mechathune and stuff now. Uh, or I mean, that's not even like a new one, but I'm just saying like there's a lot of other win conditions now that are more direct like that. But at the time, it was really like the only one in the whole game that would just say you just win the game if this happens. So I was trying to do that. Obviously, there isn't really any other special meaning to it. This thing isn't there just because you need the quest to get the coin from the guy. Uh, not that guy. But it's also there because I almost wanted to use this guy, even though I don't really have five spells to cast. But this in itself is another card that I floated as, oh, that's kind of a fun thing. Like, get him to adapt five times and just one-shot your opponent. But no, I looked through most of the Paladin cards, and there really wasn't anything that has that fun factor to it. It's kind of hard to explain. You know, it's like with Warlock, we always love Renounce Darkness. So now we're basically trying to renounce the light. That could be my whole joke for the series, where maybe the gimmick should be I'm not allowed to use any holy spells because we're trying to you know, use all these kind of, uh, the dark side of being a paladin, but, uh, what I was interested in kind of considering, this is a good thing about keeping myself always in the dark, because even though I still play this game on a regular basis, like, you know, very little, only like an hour a week in these sessions, but what I don't know is whether the two sets of, oh, this is also like the first time I've ever seen drops enabled for Hearthstone. I just always have everything enabled by default, but I've never really seen it when I go to stream it. Uh, but the thing is that there's two sets of the horsemen now, the ones you get from this, and obviously they have different names and different statings, right? Six mana, six, six, you know, they're going for a little satanic element here, but shuffle the three other horsemen into your deck. Now, does that mean that all of those horsemen say that when it dies, uh, you automatically win the game? But I wonder if that would overlap with the other, like the three horsemen, and now this one also lets you summon one of the four horsemen. So it would be cool, and again, as much as i played this game over the years, I've never seen that, or I don't know how new this card actually is, but I've seen that card in play, but I've never seen it play out as a win condition, and I've certainly never seen the two of these combined. So it would be cool if that's some unintentional or whatever, potentially very strong interaction where I just keep summoning the ones from my hero power here and they keep dying and then eventually you'll get the win condition from one of these because all three of these didn't die but all three of the other ones died it would be cool to see that but i'm pretty sure it would be separated but it wouldn't surprise me either way so we'll give that a shot maybe we'll get to see that interaction but yeah i just played like a couple games last time i didn't do too much but it is a little disappointing in a way there's nothing i can really think of that's too fun for Paladin. There were a few other cards we wanted to see. I think I have the other hero too, just for the fuck of it. I don't really care too much about Murlocs. We do have a decent amount of Paladin cards because we have like these uh, other weird two kind of decks, but this one isn't as committed to the gimmick or the theme as much either as like the Shaman one, where it, it has the rule set where you're trying to make it about this, but it's not really like as hard of a rule set. Uh, I should probably have two of the other Ancient Brewmaster too. I'm surprised I don't. But yeah, it's just very much a win condition. This kind of deck, sometimes people find pretty unfun too, because it's kind of too narrow, right? You have a very specific way of winning, and if it doesn't work, you don't win. And if it does, you you know, it's it's kind of like non-interactive. Either it works or it doesn't. And so it has less to do with mainly what, what your opponent is doing. Uh, so you're getting out the coins. A lot of the stuff is in there just for the fuck of it. Like, I don't know why Lord Thamar is really even in there. It'll make all these 12-12, six mana 12-12, but so what? Uh, uh, but no, it would be very interesting to see that. So this isn't the four horsemen, it's the eight horsemen. And I'll keep iterating on this a little bit like I sometimes try to do with these gimmick decks. But for now, let's just try to get some gameplay in because last time I was trying to make it overall. Or I was almost thinking I should do like all, uh, every paladin legendary, but I won't even be able to make all of them. But, you know, just for the fuck of it, like a 30 legendary deck, just because I can't come up with really a good idea. Or that one would almost make sense with like a priest because... Priests are so, like, you know, top-heavy anyway, or they like that kind of showy stuff, so... Where you just have, like, every class legendary in the game, in a deck, the way that, you know, Total Biscuit would do at the beginning of the game. Let's just have every legendary overall. 
The problem with this is there's too many things that are like, you need Uther, then you need the coin guy, then you need the, I guess you only need a certain number of coins, but you know, especially when you start with the coin, that's very good. But see, how will he ever know that I'm not actually playing for Galvedon overall, which there's really no way that I can get five spells. Right, I don't think I have five total in here that would target my minions. <clears throat> but we're just using that, obviously, for the one effect, which is a lot of work to put in just for that, but... No, I should almost make it where, you know, we have this, clearly, for that purpose. We should make it so we can get Galvanon too. Like, we don't always... You know, our coin condition is already met, right? So all we need... Or, you know, you could do Thrasian too, to reduce the cost of everything, so... Uh, why would that matter with the hero power, though? I guess it wouldn't really do a whole lot. There could be other things like that just increase the hero power cost. So, for example, uh, whatever, other neutral cards that just, like, reduce the cost of your hero power or let you cast the hero power twice in the same turn. Which doesn't even really matter, though, because... Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I've forgotten totally how this works. Let's just try to see how it plays out. You need Beardo to refresh your hero power every time you play something, but there might be another card now neutral that does something like that. <clears throat> yeah, I've never seen by an opponent. I've seen them play the Baron Rivendare, but I've never or Rivendare War Rider, but I've never seen them actually win because of it. And I've never seen so you would kind of need some sort of a you know how with Mechathun you do the naturalize to your own Mechathun to try to win as your last card. You would need some way to guarantee kill it yourself, which I'm not sure if Paladins really have, right? A way to kill it to guarantee you get the death rattle so they don't silence it or something, right? They're not going to just sit there and let you do that. We have a decent amount of coins. In fact, it gets to the point where you almost have too many. Let's sort of share the love there a little bit. So we're being a little bit annoying and slow paced with how we're doing this, but... You know, we're waiting for our win condition, so our board's not too bad. But isn't that amazing, though? Over 10 years in the history of the game, there's not a single Paladin deck I think of as being like, this was my go-to, and it's the only one, and even looking through it, that I could really think of. Let's do Lord Thamar, or I fucked up. I should not have done that. Uh, I fucked up. I'll just do that just to get rid of it, honestly. I mean, he's almost dead already, so... What is this sick fucking avatar doing on a bot account that this guy is clearly using? Like, what, what is he gonna do? He's just playing, like, some really slow-paced thing, but... It's just a lot of games you're not gonna get the win condition, so you're not gonna win on the board like this too often. By the holy light. Let me just try to play the dude. Let me try to understand how he actually works. I'll play it for a gimmick purpose too, and if I end up losing, but I want to win because of the win condition. This is like the BM thing I would do sometimes, like with the Shaman. Oh, I can't win unless I play every Evolve card first in my hand until I have no other Evolve interactions, and then I can win, but that is kind of a bit of an entitled perspective. Let's get him to 1 HP, and then you get to... Um, I don't even know about all this shit, dude. So yeah, the, the way, let, let me look through hero power related cards in neutral, or maybe there's even one for Paladin. Like nobody is really playing this shit in this day and age, probably, but just the excitement over the other one kind of makes it interesting. So now all you would have to do is like play, th this is the whole problem too, I can't win here because there almost should be that function where you can kill one of your own minions by summoning another, right? I I'm surprised they never added that mechanic basically, because now I can't do anything. So if I'm hard stuck by my own win condition, I'd love to see it play out, right? Like, I can't win except by that Exodia thing, let's say. Which I'm not even enforcing that as a hard roll, but... I can't do anything. I can't do anything unless I... We're just trying to torture you because we're a dick. That's something a true Paladin of the Light would never do. Look, dude, how do I do this? But you can't just do this forever. I guess you could if you know that I'm playing for the win condition only. You're so fucking annoying, bro. I have the win condition, but I can't kill my own fucking minion. So what am I supposed to do? No, deal two damage to all enemies. Deal it to my own minions. That's so dumb, bro. The dangers of overloading your board. This, this is like a analogy for the dark side too. Like, oh, you know, I, I got too caught up with my own desire for power. So I summoned too many minions, but now I can't 
actually do the thing I meant to do. Fuck off, bro. I want to do it, but you're never going to do anything. Like, what is his strategy? He's just sitting there. Clearly, he must be a bot, but it doesn't seem like a bot deck or a bot avatar, but that's just what they want you to think. I don't even care if I lose, but it's like... Wouldn't you start to fatigue out, too? Like, he'd fatigue way sooner than me. So I'll let him die to that, so it's not my fault. But, like, what the fuck is he doing? You might think that... You might think, uh, you know, what am I doing? But I at least have a clear condition for my... So it's not enough to do a gimmick deck in and of itself. But you have to also try to win in the gimmick way. Right? Like, even with the uh, evolve thing. It would make it really hard sometimes. Because, like, oh, I drew into another evolve effect when I had lethal. And I have to play the evolve effect before I do lethal. But the act of playing the evolve effect makes it so I can't attack with the board. Because everything reset. You know? Or he's going to bait me once by not doing his hero power, and then I'll end up... You know... Or yeah, that would be one of those inter-class interactions that I wish they had a mode like that, where you could combine, like, multiple classes. Kind of like what they let you do in Arena for Halloween, sometimes, is, uh... If you had, like, Koldara Drake plus this, it could be really good with the... But, I don't know. It, it would maybe be a good interaction. I forget exactly. You can just, like, cast your hero power as many times as you want. Uh, but it would still cost too much, basically. Bro. We have almost too many things that give me a coin, which maybe you don't need. Maybe you want some more card draw or some other just good quality cards to help you cycle through and... I'm just gonna let him die to fatigue because he's being kind of peevish and annoying. So, I mean, in that case, it's not my fault, right? But I don't understand what I'm playing against. If this is a bot, at least we're giving him maximum screen time and... You can tell by their name sometimes, but... You're so stupid, bro. Like, why are you even doing this shit? You're gonna have Dead Man's Hand, and then I'm actually gonna lose. <laughs> that, that would be deserved. If you did that, you would actually deserve the win. I would have nothing to say. But keep him as low as possible, at least as you're doing this. I don't understand, bro. So look, dude, you'll certainly get your win condition this way. I mean, I already have it. I could already just win, right? If I could just destroy my, uh... And now I can't even attack him because... Or no, I can do whatever I want. But I should have made it like a perfect honorable kill. Or no, it is. Never mind. Yeah, n nice game, dude. I was trying to win in a fun way, but you wouldn't let me have it. Right, that's so that's such a cuck job, stupid ass game, but whatever, dude. Like, I'm not satisfied by that at all. Okay, let me. <laughs> fuck. Even when you win, you get cucked by your win condition. So, let me see. Uh, anything that mentions hero power, again, whether it resets it, makes it cost less, anything of the sort. After you cast spell, refresh your hero power. Obviously, that's the whole staple of it. Your next hero power this turn costs zero. Like, that could arguably have value, but it's just not worth the trouble, right? But you're relying on Beardo a bit too much. You can cast your hero power twice in a turn. I'd like to see some intent to do these things, like... Use your hero power, draw a card. Your hero power triggers... Yeah, see, like, what if you combine these two? Like, you play this. So you have Uther out, right? Then you play this guy and this guy together. So that means that... You have... Two, four, and then you play it twice, right? And yeah, yeah, that's all. I want to see that interaction. Well, I don't have enough dust right now, but that's all you would have to do. But it's a lot to ask. But you could have two of each of these and then combine them in any way you want. Like where you just kind of have to do it all in the same turn. Battle cry. Like you could. There's so many cards that could actually play into this where it doesn't always have to be about Beardo. Um, next time you cast your hero power, it costs two less. And this is, one is actually great because then that holds it in reserve for next time, right? You don't even have to do it the same turn. So you save that. Hero powers are disabled. Yeah, why don't you hard counter me with that? Replace your hero power with Algon's vision, which is what? Look at the top card of your opponent's deck. You may. Oh, okay, that's cool. Why have I never seen like some of these cards? Or I mean, I'm sure I've seen it played, but I don't remember the effect too vividly. Double the damage and healing of your hero power. So, yeah, there were a number of cards that we could try to play into with this, like. Um, next hero power costs zero, right? That could be something of note. You could do so one two uh one two maybe this although i kind of doubt it one two three those things are all relevant maybe this 
but the fact that it's this turn so there's like four cards there five cards here to consider six cards to consider uh that one maybe not so much but maybe six cards seven cards yeah there's at least seven cards like that you could potentially get to try to do effectively what beardo will do a lot simpler but uh what was the other thing koldara drake let me just see what that would mean you can use your hero power any number of times but the fact that it costs six means that it would have its limits let's go again so we did win but it wasn't what i wanted i don't really care about you know how far we get either because we typically don't play enough or these decks aren't really good enough to get too far be like oh somebody probably you could get wild legend with uther in 2024 maybe but the way you would do it would be something else entirely right like oh i could get legend with renounced darkness but you wouldn't really be using it you would just have it in there as a you know novelty probably you will not stop me now yeah shouldn't we be on the same side wait what oh wait I, I thought i'm thinking like i'm already the death knight uther just going into the game because yeah i'd like to see galvadon actually play out as well so there's a number of dynamics we could look at but i'm just gonna obsess over the other one too i want to see i don't want to win because of the four horsemen i want to win because of the eight horsemen i want to do it somehow at the same time the next minion you summon deals one damage to another minion and then you have that guy as a 6-1 as the final horseman of the other set like i want to somehow figure out how to do that where they both trigger at once where you summon the fourth horseman and you kill the other horseman there must be a way to do it okay add a coin give your opponent one that's fine don't really care about it yeah, we'll teach this phony Lich King who the real fucking Death Knight is over here. Which is something that Arthas doesn't even do. Which makes you wonder, like, could he have just done that? Could he have made Uther a Death Knight? Like, why not? He does that with countless other people, even Paladins, etc. Or who is that one guy? Like, is it Thane Corthaz, maybe? Uh, who's like... Th there's a really cool line. Or is that Zeliac? It might be Zeliac. Like... The light with him was so strong that he can use the light even in undeath even as a death knight right it still obeys his command which is fucking awesome that's one of the coolest bits of flavor text let me actually look it up like zeliac i'm pretty sure yeah so strong was his faith this is a badass line he was a paladin in life, so strong in his faith that even in undead, the power of the light is still heated as call, smiting his foes in battle. Like, what a fucking badass. Even though it almost doesn't make sense, because why would the light want to be associated with... You know, I don't get it. Or, like, that shows you that he's more devout and powerful than even anybody else. Like, that means his devotion to the light was greater than Arthas or anybody else. So we can just, I don't know why I would even want to do this, but I will. So let's see if we can win because of the win condition, but it just so often doesn't happen. I don't know why I even have this guy in there. Just because he's a new card, I guess. So some of this isn't even gimmickly consistent. And it is towards the end of the month, so it tends to be easier this way. Or maybe we're only going to see bots, which I kind of got that impression at the end of last month. Which is why I sort of changed the order in which I do it now. I won't start with the new gimmick deck at the first episode of the month. I'll start with the second episode, and then I'll end with the first episode of the next month. Or I might let it go on a little bit longer, too, but... Uh, what am I doing? I just have to wait for some stupid-ass win condition thing, which is not the most fun mechanic to do. Where's some guaranteed value, guaranteed effect, guaranteed win condition. Like, everything is just sort of preset in stone. Not that I played this deck very much in the first place, but... You know, the Death Knight Hero cards were very iconic at the time. It's just like... It was maybe that they were too strong and had too much impact was, would be the knock against them. You get Uther, now you just basically need Beardo. The coins are increasingly easy to get at some point where it becomes very... Uh, you know that's not really the issue you only need like really three of them right you 
you play the hero power, then you coin, then you play it, then you coin, then you play it. So you, you play it once already, then you coin, play, coin, play, coin, play. So you just need three. Assuming that the turn you do it, you don't already have one out there just from the last turn that they couldn't deal with. Because you might think, oh, they would never allow that. But even good decks might sometimes just not care. Like, you know, what's the difference of one of them? So oftentimes you can probably get away with just having two coins. Okay, one thing we don't really have here is much good AoE. We do have like some equality consecrate type shit, but... What I should do with this is make it like more class oriented where I don't have too many neutral cards unless I absolutely have to. But there's just nothing that really stood out. Oh shit, speaking of wild, better form of uh, equality consecrate here, but... This will also be that they could fill up my fucking hand with this shit, but... That's clearly a counterplay to the Wild Pyromancer because you know it means that they're going to play a spell. This could actually be bad because they could just, you know, block out my hand and then if we draw into Beardo, like that, these are two cards that you must have, right? You must have Uther and you must have Beardo. There's no alternative. So if they do some stupid Gnome Feratu play or some shit, right? And they just, for, or even like a Dirty Rat to get out Beardo, then it's just over because there's nothing you can do. You would probably just want a lot of card draw in here because you get to, you know, try to cycle through. I'm just going to lose on the raw state of the board. But then again, not really, because if you play a spell... Oh, shit. Okay, so obviously this is not a big deal, but... They are going to be farming cards, which is what I should be doing. See, we already win the game. That's it. Like, that's all we have to do. If he plays, like, one spell, it'll be, you know, the final coin that we need, which we maybe arguably don't even need. That might have seemed stupid, but it's okay. And you can always play it that way, too. That's why uh, the, the whole uh, Brewmaster shit, you can play one of them, then return it to your hand, and then save it. And then somehow... I forget how they work in terms of the rotation, though. Will it always summon the same one? Like, if I return one, or will it be random, or will it be the next one in the same order? Like, it'll only only summon the next one if you already have the first one on the board. But either way, you can always save them in your hand from that. You look tasty. So, it is a little bit concerning, but... We can play the Uther, it'll give us some healing, and we're pretty much setting up to just win. Why am I not getting the next coin though? He's just not playing any spells or what? You know, maybe we can show off and flex the idea of uh, of returning one to my hand, right? But definitely that armor and the healing helps a lot here. I mean, this card kind of still holds up. Like, never mind even the win condition. Just it's still pretty good value. You get the five weapon, you get a life steal, you get the armor. Like, they are still pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's really going to win it for you. So the only thing we're missing, unless I'm even doing the math wrong, we play it once, we reset, we would just need like another cheap spell too. Right? It, because we would have enough mana. We could play it, do the coin, play it, do the coin, play it, and then we need one more. Yeah, that should be enough, right? Mathematically. We play it for two, then we have nine, then we play it for two, we have seven, then we play it for two, then we have like five. So we would have enough. We would absolutely just have enough. But maybe I want to toy around with him a little bit because we get to... I'm curious how this part works. So now, by doing that, who will I get next, right? Could I get the same guy again or... I don't know, I forget how that part works. Let's actually try it. Now think about how much easier that makes it for me though because... Well, I guess even if you do get him again... No, I guess what you would do is you would play them first and then do it. But if you want to try to collect them right over the course of time, like I want to do it again and I want to play them all from my hand at the same time. And I maybe shouldn't mess around too much because we have gotten pretty low.
this is like some alternate universe fan fiction type thing too that the Death Knights always do like you know some sort of fanfic for Jaina I want Jaina to say bow to your queen because it's like a fantasy fetish stupid thing that's why we have uh you know some rule 34 where she becomes a lich like none of that stuff actually happened in the lore so this is like if Uther had turned into a Death Knight right then he would try to take over power from Arthas This bot wasn't programmed to understand how Rush actually works. And then he doesn't even kill the shit on my board. So what I'm curious about is again, will we get this dude again? And at least we immediately won't. I guess we can just do it. Right, like why take a chance when he's being a little bit annoying? So what BM thing could I have done? I guess I could have tried to return it to my hand more. Ah, the four horsemen. It's not possible. Nobody's ever been able to summon them. The uh, title that I used in the past before to do with this deck, like the line from Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge where Kaiba says that. Ah, Exodia. It's not possible. Nobody's ever been able to summon him. Which is actually a line from the real show, too. Just the way he says it is... Uh, so like over the top. Yeah, that's actually we see the proper win condition. Now we can ho only hope to see the same thing over and over again. And how fun and satisfying would that be? Like, I'm not even against it, but. But no, like who else can do Mechathun anyway? Like Warlocks can do it and Druids can do it. So if you wanted to see another win condition like this. Right, I could do a gimmick deck with that, but. I'm trying to think. There must be other classes. Anything where you have like a cheap way to destroy your own minions. Even seeing it as Warlock kind of surprised me at the time. But then a lot of people were doing it. That was like at the end of 2022 at least that I saw it. Uh, in Wild a lot. And some of them at pretty high ranks. Some of those decks I would get hard countered by. That, but then you would stop to see them. Like, you know, like the Priest decks. I would never beat them. But then you stop seeing Priest. Or uh, as you got higher. So they're like losing the other things, so therefore they're not able to beat me. Whatever I was using, like the imp thing or the even the curse warlock later. Only another two cost card. Okay, fine. <clears throat> yeah, this would be the ultimate. Let's see a Mechathune warlock versus this. Like one win condition versus another. But mine would probably win out because you're gonna have to wait so long for your deck to empty out that, you know, I'll get there first. And that's the whole fun too, sometimes of these gimmicks, is even if you lose, right, th this is a gimmick that kind of supersedes everything else. Which what that means is, like, with the Evolve gimmick deck, oh, I might get my cool little Evolve interactions, but then I might still lose. So I might achieve the gimmick interactions that I'm trying to do, but then it doesn't win you the game, right? Whereas here, it will be a guarantee at least to win you the game. You can count on me. Well, the whole point with that is that, uh, most of them are like that, where you'll get, oh, you get some cool Renounced Darkness pull and you play a bunch of fun stuff, but then you lose. Or uh, even with the anti-spell gimmick deck, like the Druid or the Mage, right, that the Mage is the next one I'm actually going to do. You might play a lot of stuff and stop them from playing spells, but they might still just beat you on the board because of power creep and modern standards. So, like, you might do what you're trying to do, but it's still not, which I'm still satisfied with, but it's just different with this kind of deck. We already have the coin condition, so now it's again just a matter of drawing through 23 cards and waiting for the one. So like, you really need more cards. Or, I mean more card draw to make this work. You can't just sit here and hope that you get Beardo and hope that you get Uther because the rest of my deck is just going to be too shitty to survive. Even a bronze rank 9 probably. So those other decks, you're guaranteed to have fun, but you're not guaranteed to win. This one, you're guaranteed to win, but you're not always guaranteed to have fun, is how you can look at it, because the gimmick itself is not really all that exciting. I want to see, like, the other one come into play, too. The six cost, uh, War Rider in that set, and again, whether they interact together. They almost should. Like, it wouldn't be too overpowered. It still takes a certain amount of work, and the Death Rattle one in particular is a little bit, uh... Yeah, that could have countered me, but it really didn't. 
And I don't know why I even have that shit in there. By the holy light. What else was he going to say? Like, when you go through these gimmick decks, you basically are trying to do it in such a way that... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think what else would people put in here. Like, it would just have to be card draws type stuff. Right, like, now I'm just screwed. I have the coins for the win condition, but now what are we going to do? We're just going to sit on them and wait. It's not like they're that valuable that you would want to do it anyway, but... No, that's a fun way to do it. You try to return all four of them to your hand and then play them all out of your hand. Not that there's any real need to do that, but it, it could work because... Or yeah, yeah, like Rin the Dark Disciple. That's another one. These kind of decks can be fun. That's one I didn't even do as Warlock. Right, because there's so many other fun ones. Renounce Darkness itself. This one just is in there because of the fun factor too. Just, uh, you know, whatever. I haven't really seen that effect in play much. Let's just go ahead and do that. You know, we could almost do Wild Pyromancer myself for the whole, uh... I mean, you can always do it with the coins, too. Right, if you really have to for AoE purposes. Like, we keep running into the spot where we don't have very good AoE. You know, he could just silence it and stop me from getting it in the first place. Or with any of the other ones, you could silence it, too. Right, so you do get that. Taunt, Lifesteal, Rush. Also something that encourages you to get through or cycle through your deck, but it's going to take too long to get all of them. Or by that logic, there should only be three of them. So it's six, six, six as well to match the motif. All right, so you have a quality consecrate for this board that is not really that impressive. I think I'd rather almost do that, but the coins are going to kind of fuck me all up. Uh, here we go. We'll do that one. We don't even have the little dinky Uther thing to go along with this, so. You do have the quality consecrate in my back pocket. This is just a hodgepodge sort of mess of a deck that doesn't really have the most cohesive thing to it. Even though it has the win condition, it's not really what I typically like with these kind of decks. Is that it, like you hard commit to one idea, which I'm not really doing here. Everything in it should relate to that one thing. You could do it, but do I really want to do it as a thing? Your minions can't take more than two damage at a time. These two effects are kind of, you know, very similar to each other. The whole coin thing is cute, but... Maybe I should do this with the Stegadon thing and just ignore what he's doing. Let's see what this is. You get two random dragons with plus two plus two. What do you mean get two, though? Get him in my hand? Your battle cry this turn triggers twice. Use a friendly minion, so I'm going to copy of it with three health and taunt. Uh, let me just do this. It's at least an adequately annoying play, and then we still have a quality consecrate to fall back on. It just kind of drags out because it's too limited. The, the way that you're trying to win is like very much on the nose. But I can't believe I never actually tried to do Rin as part of the whole... You know, that, that's not a bad gimmick either. Rin and Mechathune, or you know what, combine them both. Have Rin and Mechathune in the same Warlock deck, because at least that is a viable thing to potentially do. And I still never played Sargeras, because that was my only chance to do it, I guess, at that time. So I would always override it with Renounce, right? I just never happened to... Right? It was at the same time, I'm pretty sure, but I just never got the chance. So that maybe seems like a quality Consecrate-worthy target, but... The, the attack and health of... Wait... Of all enemy minions to two, I guess that would work for uh, the same purpose, really. If we did this and we coined out the thing. Eh, I don't know. Or you don't even have to do it. You could just do this and then... Let me see what we get here. Fairy Dragon, Nazdormu, let's do that one. It's still cut in half, so they'll only hit me for... Is it rounded up or rounded down? Rounded up, okay. So these will still do two each. 
So we're still in a fine position, but we kind of need something here that's going to be... Remove the top five card. That might actually help me because... It might help me get to my win condition sooner, but it, we might just also lose my win condition, which I didn't. Right, so we got the fucking Uther and the thing coming up. So we're gonna need the same shit again with, uh... You know, we'll do this one, and then we'll do... Right, the effect that makes them all have two, and then we'll do it again. That... Or wait, so the attack and health of all enemy minions to two. Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up because you can't. Oh shit. Oh shit. Because the coin itself is gonna cost two. Good one, dude. Good one. I mean, that's still good, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't what I expected. I mean, now I don't fucking know what's going on. What are the other two? Draw two minions, get a plus two plus. I don't know what I could possibly do to win here now. Right, the win condition is not going to come into play because I don't even have anything close to enough to do this. And I guess my rounding element won't work with an effect like that. Where, you know, it's doing one at a time. So like Cthulhu and stuff would still... Okay, dude. You have enough if you... Or no, you don't. The shield effect is so fucking insane. I do actually love that. Even though you might question, why do I even have another hero in there when I... So all that they're doing isn't preventing me from getting what I need, but I just don't... It just doesn't matter either. Now you could do the trick again, and then you could do it again with this. So infinite equality consecrate type mechanics. Uh, we go to here. We do it again. Like, we still have a chance. But the problem is my healing situation is just too fucked up. Right, where I just don't have enough health. Rush. You're holding a dragon, destroy a random enemy minion. First of all, each turn costs zero. Uh, if you had all four horsemen die this game, obviously rush, 6-6. Six, six. One has lifesteal, which I'd rather have that right now. Okay, that still doesn't bother me too much, but... Let's just play that to destroy the enemy minion. Okay, okay, dude. What is that thing again? I forget. Symphony of Sins. He's obsessed with the number six, too. We have, you know, something in common with our affinity for the darkness. I guess we're not really rotating between the... Oh, I should do the twist thing when I lose, but... Whatever, we'll just stay on this one, I guess. Which normally, I never do that, actually. I try to rotate between two gimmick decks or... Between at least wild and the twist mode. <clears throat> or interestingly, some of these gimmick decks were actually playable in the twist mode because... Maybe I should do that. I'll play the twist till I lose. Because this one we could at least do at any time. But which ones haven't I already played as? Nah, let's not even bother. That would have been fun to make a whole format out of. And I obviously couldn't do it because... Whatever, it was like... I didn't have enough time or I didn't bother or I didn't have all the cards like unlocked to be able to do that. In the RP of this, we could say, oh, we get to play again, despite, you know, always doing that rotation. When we lose, we have to play something else. That we get a bubble, because we're a paladin, so we get to bubble out of that one defeat, at least. Or that's why I criticize that one card, timeout, right? Why is it timeout for a class like paladin when it should be bubble? It should be divine intervention or whatever, right? Like, why should it be... Uh, when you have so many proper bubbles that you could have named it after, you're instead naming it timeout in some gimmick, like some sports related uh, theme that you were trying to do at the time right like it just doesn't make sense why that would need to be the card there is like this weird uh, design philosophy that you see in so many card games whether it be you know obviously pvz heroes you see a lot of that like this pun design where they'll design cards after like some sort of gimmick of their own as much as i like gimmick decks but it means like some sort of set that they're doing that's just very insular and has nothing to do really with anything this can be very good, actually. Sometimes I hesitate to even want to use the win condition right away, but it's just a matter of dumb luck. You should almost just mulligate it in your hand every fucking time for the, uh, for the dinky capability of being able to get Uther and get... I mean, those are really the only two you need. You need Uther and 
uh, Beardo. That's it. If you get those two, all the coins and stuff will resolve themselves because you have so many cards in here that could give you that. It's like something is missing. It doesn't feel like a true giving deck. It feels like just a... I don't know. It's just not the same when you have like an auto win condition. It just sort of defeats the purpose, right? It's still a bad deck, don't get me wrong, but there's probably just better ways to do the same purpose and it almost feels like that's all it is because I'm not doing anything else really too interesting with it. Again, you would just need one more coin, so starting with a coin is a major boost too. But again, it's just a matter of getting through. You would just need a better deck overall just to survive through long enough to be able to you know, dig through your deck, or again, have a lot of card draw. Or again, try to do it with that one, which I'm not the biggest fan of doing, but... Go ahead. We haven't had the chance to really see that play out. Use a minion, destroy all minions, less, less attack. Cast three, random pound and secrets. Yeah, let's do that one, actually. Or yeah, Mysterious Challenger, which I saw a PTSD associated with that, with just how much you would see it. The most annoying shit ever. Which they did nerf, but I forget how they even nerfed it. Or maybe they just nerfed something else, like... But that's all it was. It would just play, like, all the secrets from your deck, which you might say, well, haha, -ha, you had to have so many secrets, but that's still... You know, that's still an insane amount. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, we already have that set up, right? So the coin aspect is very easy to get now. Not that it was always the hardest thing, but you have like a lot more options. But what you don't have is, again, any way to guarantee that you're going to get Uther or... What about that one dude that's like, draw your highest cost card? Couldn't I have that guy and then he would guarantee that I get Uther every time? Right, like Talon or somebody? So we get... We get that, and then there's no way I can guarantee drawing Beardo. Or, or there will be a two, like draw a three cost card. There's all kind of shit that probably makes this like, super easy now. Uh, what do I have? Six? You know, you could... Well, let's just do that. We're going to end up having too many coins where it just becomes overkill. But then it can kind of fuck up your opponent's hand too that you get to... Uh, this is the state of Hearthstone in 2020 fucking 4. Toy Soldier Board. Um, yeah, we have even coins to spare. So let me look for a few things after this then. Tail in four ring, maybe draw your highest cost card, or is it draw your highest cost minion? But either that or something that says like draw one, two, and three cost card. So the three cost card would be Beardo if I make sure that's the only one I have, which I can't really guarantee that because of Consecrate, but. And I love the idea of playing around secrets from back in the day. Like, oh, you should try to guess what they are or test for them. In this day and age, when you have every secret in the history of the game, especially in Wild, right, there is no such thing that you can do because it's, like, not really the best use of that board. If you had done, like, Savage Roar or some shit, you maybe could have killed me. Um, so we have more than enough coins. I want to see this one maybe play out. This one just seems kind of too slow and annoying, though. It almost kind of hurts you because it'll cock your ability to draw what you actually need to draw. But again, whether there's an interaction between the two, how would I even know that? You'd have to get it to die after you let the other ones die from the hero power from Uther. Yeah, let, let me look for some of those things that let you draw like a 1, 2, and 3 and things like that. It may just be relegated to minions more so. But again, so many effects that wouldn't have been intended to be used with this, which can't even be used with this because of, you know, wild... You know, you can't even use Uther at all, so like, you wouldn't be able to use the... You know, nobody's trying to do this shit, but... And of course, this is a neutral card, so it'd probably be better with, like, Priest or somebody. 
But yeah, I'm surprised I haven't done too many decks like that where it's all about the random spells and Yogg and stuff. That could be fun for like maybe Rogue. A lot of low cost spells, preparation and stuff to get you to and playing stuff like from other classes. Which is part of the reason why I didn't like Rogue and Priest. Even though I like Renounce, that somehow feels more cohesive. But like with the whatever, lowering the cost or it's all from the same class. Uh this is just gonna get to be too much, bro. I mean, that is very good value, the fucking environment from the future. Which, is that literally from the future? Because, you know, the future of what? Like, this will be a card of entry, but it's just not out yet, or what? That is such a weird mechanic. Like, why don't you beta test some of these cards? You know, we'll give you all these cards to give you stuff from the future. As in stuff we intended to make, but we weren't sure whether it's good enough or not. Cast a spell, cast a random spell, same cost, okay. Yeah, something kind of Yogg Saron based where you have as much random shit as possible. Yeah, like both Yogg's, you have like all kind of other things that complement that. I'm trying to think what class would really be the best for that. Mages do have some things like that, like uh, put these random dragon decks into your deck or something that cast a random spell when drawn. There's so many cool things you could do if you could combine classes. Like, there should be a mode. Like, you can use every card from every class combined. And just, you know, everything is neutral. It might seem a little weird, but it would be fun just as a general idea. Or maybe you have had that at one point in, like, uh... In, like, uh... Some kind of other... Some kind of other format, Tavern Brawl or something, where like there are no classes, so now you just get to do whatever you want. But instead of that, they make a more restrictive class, like Death Knight, which is a really shit design around the runes. I just think that's so dumb. You make a new class with the least amount of cards of any class in the game because it just came out. And you restrict it further with the stupid-ass rune mechanic, which would be the equivalent of giving every other class like a spec. Like, oh, there's like, uh, whatever, you know, me just have fire spells so they can only use certain spells you know you have two fire runes and one ice rune so now you can't use arcane spells or whatever right you have to commit to certain specs and limit your card collection further when you're already limiting it between the classes in the first place which is more for example than what magic the gathering does where there's just like double the you know double the classes of the colors you're splitting each color into two then you're splitting each class into three runes like how much more can you fuck that shit up So, a lot of these matches, we won't really win on the border in terms of health anyway, so, well, I guess that's the whole expectation, but I'm not getting what I need at all. Even Divine Favor won't really work because... Yeah, with that card, you have to not save the best for last because then it'll die. Uh, friendly Minion dies, return to the hand. That could have a certain value too, actually, with the, you know, with the fucking thing. I just don't have any- oh, whoops. Well, that was a fuck up. I didn't mean to play that. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm making all kind of misplays. Uh, getaway Kodo could get you to save one of the Death Knight, uh, one of the fucking four horsemen that died. You get Beardo. Now I have to wait for Uther, but now what if Uther's the last card in my deck, right? Like, there's nothing... That really is just that simple. There's no other way for me to win unless I get the other three horsemen and he happens not to silence one. It would have to be the last one or that's where certain, some of these cards make sense though. You can make a copy of it with Zola the Gorgon so you can make a copy of any of them so it'll be the last one to die because they've already... Oh shit. See I'm complaining but it's like, you know... It's true because there's nothing you can do. But that was just dumb luck. What if I didn't get it till later? I don't know. Eye for an eye, that's fine. So yeah, now we just win the game. It's just that simple, right? You have three coins, you have Beardo. Unless he has some sort of stupid uh, anti-hand thing like a dirty rat or something. 
<sighs> Fun and interactive game because I generally I would have probably lost to this guy just based on the way it's going But it doesn't matter because now there's nothing you can do but all these armor values health values survivability board control none of it matters because this game is fun and interactive, and you can just Exodia. Or not even because of that, but... Yeah, what if you had a Cthulhu that was lethal for both of you? Or it could be that I'll make them discard a card from your hand. Right, somehow you fuck up my cool weapon there. Silence of Minion, okay. I mean, most of the stuff is gonna affect the board. Right, not too many spells are going to affect the hand, really. Yeah, this game really embraces some of those fun, random, zany effects, which is one of its greatest claims to fame, right? I wouldn't say Hearthstone is one of my favorite games ever or one of the best party games ever just based on the thing alone. Just based on the... Uh, based on all the quality, how competitive it was, or everything like that. I would say it's the be one of the best party games ever based on the simple fact of being able to... Uh, have all these fun over-the-top things that are so transformative of the game like whether it be Whether it be the that animation is always so sick um, You know whether it be based on the fact of Having renounced darkness or having exploring Goro Zinazari just like these kind of crazy out there cards that have nothing to do with anything that normally you would think all oh, these are kind of game breaking or game changing too much where they're a bad thing but they're not necessarily good but they embrace Sort of that wild fun factor of it, which I do appreciate that. So that's the reason why it would be the best. Oh, it's got to be minion though. Highest cost. Uh, reorder your deck from the. Oh, you know, that could work. Whenever you need Uther, well, draw your highest cost spell. So the only ones you're trying to tell me is that reorder. Or wait a second, you just do with that. From the highest cost to the lowest cost. So you could do that for Uther, but I don't know. That's the thing. Uh, after this minion, highest cost card. Draw your lowest cost card. Draw your highest cost card. This could have a certain value to it as well. Not yet released. Oh. Um, I guess this could kind of make sense. I don't know. It seems like too much effort, but... You know, he is obviously going to be your highest cost card. It's just... You'll get fucked because... You know, like what if that doesn't work out? I don't know how much the brewmasters are really going to matter, so we can get rid of that. So Talon isn't going to work. Uh, like what if we say three costs, right? Something that mentions like draw a one, two, three cost. It might say it like this, three cost. Resurrect, no. Discover a three cost card, summon a... If you're holding another three cost card, if your deck has no three cost cards... Where's the ones that like say draw one, two, and three cost card? I don't get it. I know there's a card that says a one, two. Recruit a one, two, and three, huh? What am I thinking of? Well, let's just try it like that. So again, the only way you'd reorder it like that is if you are in the late game or if you're sort of I don't know. There, there's so many ways you could like guarantee it and game the system because like, even the one that lets you draw your highest and low... Well, I guess you don't have that yet, but... That's what I like, too, about Wild so much. Some new card that comes out in the new expansion. Like, oh, I'm so excited for that. Why? Because it's going to be good and fun in the meta and standard? No. Because it'll let me use this deck from 10 years ago. Right? And it'll interact well with that. Right? In a way that has nothing to do with anything. So, generally, I think I won't even end up using that card, but... Right, reordering, but maybe as the game goes on, it can be good. That's good for like a really kind of control style, though, where you just expect the game to go on forever. But see, if, if these were your highest cost cards, it could work for that too, because then, you know, oh, you just only have six cost cards, so you play it, and then you're guaranteed to get them. Like, it basically is just you guarantee to get Uther, but what if I get Uther first, and then I have Beardo to get, right? Then it's no use to me, so... It's just stupid because there's too much variable. Right? Even though I'm winning some of these games, never mind the rank, it's just like... 
I don't know. It, it's just too too much up to chance. You just have to hope it goes on for long enough, which against good decks it's not going to. And you just have to hope you're going to get the interaction that you want. Or, or the exact cards. And again, there's only two cards that you need. You just need Uther and you just need Beardo. The coin thing is easy to do. All this other stuff is there just as a gimmick. Access denied. So it's like a win condition deck that's suboptimal by today's standards wrapped within a wrapped within a gimmick you know this is the gimmick trying to win with this the other thing of actually just uther and winning with the four horsemen isn't really a gimmick as much as it's just a normal deck but it's uh just kind of worse by today's standards wait why are you doing this shit if bro thinks he's me what reason would a druid have to fucking play that you know some of these decks i'll beat just because they're bots or because they're just bad but I better not play into his hands by giving him more coins, but why the fuck do you have that? You know, I like how starting with a coin is such an overpowered element. Right, like it actually just makes your life so much easier. Especially at that time, it would have made a huge difference because there weren't as many cards to give you these coins like what you have now. I don't know, something about this is just not fully doing it for me in before it ends up doing better than any of my other decks anyway, which the Evolve one almost did do that. Somehow that was a little better. Yeah, I'd like to win one game because of this, but again, I can't guarantee killing it myself, so how do I do that? Like, what do I have that would, I would need like Wild Pyromancer plus this and then kill the final one. But that's like so much work and I haven't gotten to the point where the game lasts long enough to even do that. But this seems like a good opportunity to consecrate even though it maybe seems a bit superfluous. You have two coins already so all you're gonna need is uh... All you're gonna need is the simple fact, yeah, immovable object. That's what they call me in chats because I'm such a defensive minded ace. Bruh. You can go ahead, play the thing, and kill everything else. I'm fine with that. But yeah, some of these things you might question, like, why are they even in here for the sake of doing copies? And the reason why is because you can make a copy of one of the horsemen, and presumably that would have a certain value to it. Sometimes you might win even without using these effects, but that just means the deck you're going against must be really shit. Yeah, I mean, again, this is in there just for the fuck of it. This is in there just for the fuck of it. So you'd rather have cards that are more cohesive with this still, like, to try to draw cards or stall it out, which, I mean, this is pretty good at stalling it out. I'm just... There's something still missing, and I can't figure out what it is. Grove Beetle. I like that picture on there. This is like some little, you know, Warcraft mini game flash game for kids where you play as this little cute thing with a fucking shield. I like the whole art style of that. Uh, we can go ahead and just do this. Not really too, uh... I'd love to see this play out, but again, you could just easily silence it or do anything. Right, you need this one to survive, and you elite, or I mean, you need this one's death rattle to trigger, and then you need the final one's death rattle, rattle to trigger. You cannot have, you don't need the other ones, right? Like the number two and three that you summon could be silenced, but then they still die, so it still counts, right? The death rattle only matters for the final one because you would get, um, you would get the ability to basically random eight cost minion. Well, that's annoying for sure. Um,. You'd almost want to do this with equality, but I just can't even do it. Let's just not even worry about it for now. How about that? This is probably a stupid idea, but let's just do it anyway. You have double equality and you chose not to play either one. I could have done it, traded in, and then assumed that I could have done it again for this, but I really can't even. Or there's that temptation like, oh, you got to play your combo cards ahead of time 
even just to survive on the board instead of actually using them as a win condition but here it's not even like that because all you have is the coin now they've overcommitted a bit too much that's throttle you've been preventing many and summoning gray boss so you just have to kill at last there's so many fun cards that just nobody ever uses because they're not good enough or they're not meta or whatever the fuck. But at least you have a higher likelihood of seeing that when you, uh... Wait, why wouldn't you kill that, though? I still don't even really want to do it, but... Our hardships only strengthen our I don't know why I'm playing like this. I just feel like cocky because, oh, I have this, uh, I should have killed that. I have this, uh, equality, but I don't actually have an AoE to go along with it. Or that was the AoE that I just used that, I don't know why I'm leaving this eight thing around so long. I guess because it's like a defeatist mentality. See, now if I get Beardo, then I can play this and get Uther, but I'm not sure that I entirely like that. Or there's a lot of fun things you could do with this card, actually. Just have, like, a really top-heavy deck and just... You know. Okay, this is a little dangerous because I wish it rounded down. So one damage would become zero. Maybe it did say that before. Or maybe that's just how it worked and it didn't say anything, but... Hmm. It's almost pointless to even do this, but you kind of have to, I guess. I'll just do it anyway. We take four, which is still pretty... Okay, okay, dude. Okay. Wait, didn't it say an eight cost, though? What? Wait, why is that eight cost? Isn't that a little bit too good? Oh, I guess because it attacks your own thing, then. Aspect of Madness would work better, but I guess just... You probably should have done that even differently still, but... Oh, it'll fuck up my weapon, though, won't it? Can't be targeted by enemies or damage, but it can be replaced by your own shitty Ash Ringer weapon. Fuck. Okay, okay, I, I didn't even think of that, really. Okay, dude. 8 mana, 12, 12. Almost as bad as the 4 mana, 7, 7. What would it be? A 8 mana, 14, 14, then, by that logic. And that's the best way to get it from an effect like that, because... Remember the okay, bro. So what else could I potentially put in here that I was just saying, like... Uh... I don't know. Let me look at it again. I'm having a hard time really coming up with anything super cohesive here that's kind of fun. But you have kind of the win condition stuff. Like, what other card draw do you really have? I don't get it. I need the Octasari or some shit. Just let me cycle through my shit. You could use that. You could do, uh... This minion has two more attack. You would just have to fit in some random stuff that's gonna let you have card draw. Draw a dragon, draw a minion. But it, it sort of encapsulates the one vibe that I always talk about. Like, when it works, it's really fun. So in this case, when it works, then you're going to win. But then when it doesn't. So like, you know, you'll win one in five games sometimes with some of these gimmick garbage decks. But when you do, oh, it's fun and satisfying because you get the interaction that you want. And it feels more rewarding than if you won five out of five with a you know better deck. Because you know it's just the deck that's doing the difference. So, you know, use a bad deck. So when you win one in ten games, it means ten times more. But the real point is that you get to... Uh, you would get Beardo. So now we could win... Just with that dude alone, the, uh, if we get the two cost card, reorder my deck, then you're guaranteed to get the guy, Uther. So now the coins are, the coin is the least of my concern every time, right? I never feel like the coin is why I'm losing. That's just so easy to get right now. We have so many cards to do it. But it does encourage that these, that these games go on for a little bit too long sometimes. Like, you know, you want the game to kind of drag out, but not too long. Well, I mean, you'd rather just start with your opening hand. Like, if I start with Beardo and Uther in my opening hand, there you go. It's already over. So, unless, again, they have some giant rat type shit to do. 
Yeah, we're never capable of actually getting this effect. And the reason why is because you're not actually able to have five spells to cast on stuff. I barely have like five spells total unless you want to count the coins. Which does have all kind of other advantage benefits for obviously mages and stuff like the mana worm play would always be good. You play the mana worm, you play the coin, you know, that could be very strong in early hearthstone. But like how they did classic, they should do like classic arena and stuff too. Where, but see, they messed up with classic too. It shouldn't have been like it's classic and it's just classic forever. It should have rotated through like, you know, then like how they're doing with... Uh, wow classic like do classic then rotate to bc then rotate to wrath and all that kind of stuff so you're able to even like with season of discovery it is kind of interesting so you could do it that way where you just uh kind of give a taste of all the different expansions we need one more coin and uther to win the game that's literally all you would have to do and just get to like turn 10. Fun and interactive, but let's try to get to a higher rank and then see how good it actually is, which is not good at all. But, you know, every once in a while, you'll just start with a, you know, very good hand. And of course, this game favors these kind of decks even more than most because of the whole 30 card thing. Right, where Yu-Gi-Oh, you would at least have to have 40 cards for the likelihood of starting with Exodia in your hand or something. It's pretty low. But I mean, even if you start with like three pieces, then you have Sangin and all these kind of other things to get it. Yeah, the other one just seems way too slow and impractical. It's just never... It's never gonna happen. The uh, War Rider... You would have to support that one even more actively than this. Or you would just have to trigger his death rattle, I guess. Like, summon it and then do a card that triggers the death rattle automatically. But it wouldn't really matter that much. You still have to draw through the other three and... It's just one of those things that expects that the game is going, going to go on for a super long time. Which even if it does, in this case, it's not really by choice. Let's just do that, I guess, because we have nothing else to play. You know, there's no real value behind that. Okay, fine. Nothing else I really could have done there. Bro has Ashbringer, though, and he's supposed to just be a recruit. Right, like, isn't that what that looks like? Does that supposed to imply, like, oh, that was the average player in WoW in, like, Legion, where everybody wants to be, like, the hero, right? Everybody's got the Ashbringer, everybody's got this legendary weapon that doesn't even make sense because there's only one of them. It defeats the whole purpose of it. When you give everybody something legendary, it's no longer legendary. Or, like, uh, with no work, especially. It's one thing if you got it from, like, fucking Black Temple or something. But you had, uh... You know, you had this impression, there's always that great quote that somebody said like on Reddit or probably somewhere else, but it was like, you know, in vanilla we felt like uh, a nobody doing heroic things, now we feel like a hero doing nothing, right? So like you just feel like it's too much revol revolves around you. The whole story and everything is just like you're too strong now, where it kind of makes a farce out of it too, just like... I could do a quality concentrate, but maybe I'll wait. Right, it's not like the end of the world. So again, all we need is Uther. That's it. Or we could get the other card that reorders my deck and then we'll get Uther the next turn. This deck is clearly just garbage though because I've got to just make it like an actual good deck and just happen to put some of the stuff in there. That's the way it often works. But Or I'll commit to the gimmick all the more, which is often what I prefer doing. If you just make like a modern meta deck and just put a few of these cards in there, right? Maybe you, you know, you'll you'll win with it, but you won't win because of it or something. Because you don't have to commit as much as you might think. Like just have Beardo, just have Uther, and if it happens to turn out, then so be it. You might not even need the coin stuff. You could just do it with other low cost spells like secrets. You know, you could play one for two, then play a secret, then play one for two, then play a secret. You could do that for almost. You have the whole coin capability, and so therefore, I'll just do this shit for one. Oh, 
I mean, that was kind of a necessary obligatory play. I could coin out Uther if I really have to, or not Uther Tyrion. Uh, but the fact is that that kind of fucked us last time because we did it at the wrong time where we lost the weapon from uh, From Cariel because then we had to Whatever like that's the only way to destroy it apparently it doesn't lose durability So why does it even have five? I don't know and why does it lose? Uh... Or like it's just indestructible anyway, so no other effect could fuck around with it Like acidic swamp ooze or something so all we need is Uther over here. This is really literally what it comes down to. Like, it's just that simple. There's no preconception that, oh, I would try to win with, like, on the board or something. You shouldn't expect that to happen. You don't want that to be the case. Well, what you could do is sort of reorder your deck, too. That card is there specifically just for the scenario. Battle cries, trigger twice, get two random dragons. Okay, let's do that. And of course you can do it twice too. Dormant for two turns, you can use your hero power. Oh shit, we were even saying, we've had these interactions happen in actually a very interesting way. The, uh, so generous. the, like, Imagine if a shaman for the evolved gimmick deck had that one card, uh, Harik from Warlock, where you summon like eight one ones, you fill the board with one ones that are all cost eight, so it's perfect for that. We actually got that card as we were doing that. The same thing here, like imagine if we got Koldara Drake. What a great synergy with this deck, even though it's really not, because you would still need like a lot of coins and stuff to make up for that, which I have like way too many, actually. Uh, like I'm just gonna play it now because. Or no, I mean, I should do that. I'm just so low on health, though. There's nothing I can do about it. What do you think? I'm a fucking holy paladin or some shit that I'm going to have a bunch of heals in here? Like, I have that random five cost dragon that does heal me for eight for some reason. Like, again, a lot of these things are just random. But not even random within a gimmick context. They're just random, period. Like, I don't even like the way this one looks so far, but... We have seen the wind condition at least a couple times, which it wouldn't take that much to still see here. Either you have to get it by dumb luck, or you have a 1 in 2 chance every time you draw. So like every turn we have like a, a 1 in 9 chance to get... Er, wait. I don't know. Oh, that's the speak of the devil. We should almost play that other... You know what? We'll play it with the coin, actually. And we have like a pretty good thing here going, too. We just don't want to get overburdened with this shit here either. The, uh... This thing is actually more, much more dangerous because he could just eat your shit right up. Even though this guy is annoying. He's just like the other 7 cost. The 7-7, seven, seven, Anubis Hath, whatever, that summons the 1-1 one, one Scarab kind of. Same concept. Uh... Deal 6 damage, lifesteal tradable. Uh... Change the health of all... Oh shit, yeah, as if you need more. We're getting so many thematic things. Right, all it says is you get two random dragons, but like, that one was to do with the hero power Koldara Drake that I was just talking about too. And then this one's to do with obviously role playing as a paladin with Consecrate. Or, I mean equality. We're getting a lot of very on the nose stuff. Bro, can I just get Uther and be done with this shit, dude? We are getting some pretty- Yeah, some of the most fun interactions we've gotten are just from her. I was almost gonna make a copy of her just for that reason. Now, the problem is that we don't actually have an AoE, so we're still gonna die. Well met. Okay, okay, dude. If I got it, could I actually... We have multiple ways to reduce their... No, but it makes their attack value that too, right? It makes their attack value too, so therefore I don't have to worry about it. Cease your quarrel at once. Maybe I should just spam some coins, just for the fuck of it. Endless coin chain over here. I am very low though, so I'm not too happy about this, but there's nothing I can do. I mean, we have the life seal thing coming, maybe. We have the adequate number of coins. The only thing we need is the one dinky fucker, and his name is Uther. Bro, he's gonna be the last card in my deck. But then I even put that stupid thing 
Uh, I forgot the name already, but the one that reorders your deck from highest to lowest cost that I put in here specifically for this exact situation where I have Beardo and not Uther. And this is the only time it'll be good. So it'll still take a turn to get there, but... I can make a copy of this chick to do that shit again. Or I kind of want to do this, or I could do both. Right, do the lifesteal, do the thing. Poisonous Cactus. Cactus Rager, they'll never never give up the whole Rager meme. But it's not, uh... It's even better, because it's not a 3 cost like a lot of the other ones were. Uh, it should have Rush, too, why not? Oh yeah, we just get a random 10-10 that we've basically forgotten about. So we can do the, uh... Why don't we just do this and then... I mean, it only costs 2. You'll do that, and then you'll get to basically what a game-changing play that is. Then we'll get to do the six damage as well. Or wait a second. Oh, it's only with the quick draw. Never mind. All right, we'll save the Koldara Drake, clearly, for some crazy combo. But we don't really need the combo because, again, imagine winning on the board because of the Drake. That is so fucking stupid. We're winning and getting the best interaction from which card? That stupid three-cost bitch who gives us the environment from the future. Not even from the actual mechanic. Oh, shit, I didn't want to do this. Hang on. Fuck. Ah, uh, whatever. We'll do another one. Um... Yeah, we're getting it from her. That's the most fun card in this deck. That's the real gimmick. Just getting a random environment that anybody can use that has nothing to do with this deck. I must protect the wild. I will fight with honor. Okay, let's just try to get rid of these. You almost don't even need that. Like, I swear, these coins are so... Maybe I just should get rid of the quest thing because... You have so many other options for coins. Right, that you really get rid of the last Kaleidosaur and get rid of those guys who give you the coins from that. And then you have still all these other ones. This Titan has come in to play a lot though. Just for sort of stalling out and helping you survive and basically doing effectively on a quality. It's better than a quality in fact because you get their health value, their attack value down too. In case that's not enough. Wasn't that supposed to be three costs these days? So now you have this dude who's not really going to serve much of a purpose, or I guess it would. See, I could just return it and do the coin again from the same one, and it wouldn't even matter with the de death rattle. Like, my coin condition is already met. Yeah, that's what I might do. I'll get rid of all those ones, and I don't know what I'll put in their place, though. Right, get rid of this clown because I don't care about that effect. That seems definitely not like the issue. Right, where I'm sh short on the coins. Like, you have so many cards that are going to give you that. I should get, like, some kind of card draw type shit instead. Which, again, you might think that uh, Divine Favor, or what is it called? The three cost. I can never remember the fucking card names. Um, or I always come up with my own stupid nicknames for them, but yeah, like you would want that, but you really can't have it because so many of the cards in your hand you're going to have is like saved up for some other reason. Right, I'm doing this just to deliberately fill up their fucking hand too. Yeah, that always makes sense because I keep saying that every game that, oh, we have too many coins. We don't need, you know, all these things for it. Goff, who at one point was very overpowered, which I forget what they even did to change them. I guess it was the empty mana crystal. Right, just instead of gain a mana crystal, it's gain an empty mana crystal. We have Uther, so now we just need Beard out. Which we can't really do right now, anyway. Right, that thing just shouldn't even be in here. I'd have to decide what else I really would want. I guess we can have one of these things that are basically like, uh... We could either just make multiple copies of the same stuff we have, or we could make, uh... Some of those ones I was talking about before. The, uh... 
whatever some of the ones that let you play your hero power multiple times but again that's not even really the issue it's just getting to that point that's the issue so i'll just maybe put some card draw in there Yeah, two random nature spells reduce the cost of spells in hand by one. Okay, bro. Yeah, we need like that million armor guff glitch thing that they had. The billion armor, in fact. Which maybe isn't even a glitch, but it's just really hard to do. And then I just use plate breaker and still beat your dumbass. Yeah, the whole thing with getting over the maximum mana value is what's really interesting about it. 13. Although it only is arguably helping me. So like, no matter how much armor or other shit you get, that would be... I don't even need Play Breaker. I'll just beat you with a win condition, but... We need the stupid-ass Beardo guy. Oh, shit. But... Are you going to be able to give it charge, or what? How do you do this? Okay, this actually might be that one, but it's not the armor one. It's the... Or maybe it is. Because now you gain attack based on that. As if I could... As if I care, bro. Do you realize what deck you're playing against right now? Now you can just fuck around in, in the late game phase, but... Do you... But how do you... How do you know you're going to win with this? Wait, what is that card? Snapshot of your current hand. Bro thinks he's actually doing something, but he's not. If I just win because of this, I bet this is the thing you'd least like to see right now. Let's do this actually, and then. Right, because you can't necessarily do anything about if only you had known, bro. But then again, kind of the stuff I'm playing to get the coins would almost tell you that. So I love this. We're going to beat a deck potentially that is not one that we would normally be able to beat. Right, with a crazy thing like this, just because we're going to get the four horsemen thing. Restore, because I don't care about the health. I just care more about, like, what is their hand going to be that you get to... Like, really, what are they going to do from the hand? And are they going to keep... Okay, okay, dude. Can you just keep doing that forever? You would think you wouldn't really be able to do too much here, though. Right, you're gonna... I don't know. Can you just keep cycling the snapshots? Bro thinks he's doing dead man hand over here. Dead man's hand. The health value is not really the thing, but how do you keep dealing with the four horsemen? Right, I'd love to see this play out. Bro picked the wrong day to play Billion Armor Druid, even though it's only 1,200, but... For all intents and purposes, that would take a really long time to do. What are you going to do, bro? If your deck has no duplicates, duplicate your hand. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, but it's really the Beardo thing that we're looking for. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't burn it. Though. Oh! Okay, okay, dude. Normally I'd embrace the card draw, but... Fuck. Well, now there might not be much I can do. Or that was kind of... I don't know, now I'm just getting kind of tilted. The all I would have needed is Beardo, which he... I guess he guessed correctly to try to do the naturalize, but how did he know I couldn't have gotten it later or something? I'm really not impressed, bro. I'm really not impressed. Because it's not because of the armor, really. It's because of that fucking... He would have to not be able to deal with that, but the reason why is because <laughs> you destroy your own thing and I still draw two cards. What other way would I have had to win with this? And it doesn't count that they're destroyed by being burned, right? Or maybe somehow it would.
Just, you would need something to be able to do this shit, like... I, will not I don't know what's going on anymore. That It was just unlucky that I burned it, like, whatever, bro. But then again, he burned, like, half my deck here, so I guess... It's not too surprising. You can really do this shit. It's not the armor that actually does it. That's the stupid thing about it. Right? It's not actually the armor. It's the... I guess you could just, like, stop summoning stuff. No no rest. Let me give it another turn, and then we'll see whether he can actually do the... I can do the timeout next. Because if you don't give them anything that you're playing, then you won't be able to do it, but... I'm really kind of disappointed by that, though. I had a chance to beat that very easily. And I wasn't able to because... What if you just starve him out? Because you don't actually play anything. Right, he'll summon something of his own and then do it. But then... Uh... You will actually use timeout here. And then you get to do this. Draw a card, discover two legendary minions, draw three cards, replace your hand with legendary minions. Maybe one of these will actually be good, I don't know. Clearly that's gonna change the outcome of the game and you're just gonna make me draw it, but it doesn't matter because I'm dead anyway. Right, I just... I'll die on my turn, I guess. Or no, I won't. Draw a card, fill your hand with copies, draw three cards, reduce your cost to zero. Let's see what we could possibly get with this. You start the game as a different class, draw five secrets, friendly beast, Gromash, vision of darkness, trade, awesome invention, discover two cards. Give your opponent two at random. Uh, the only damage to a random enemy, the rest of the game. I don't know, nothing is really going to stop you from uh, <laughs> giving him that Kel'Thuzad that's going to beat him on its own. I think that part is what's not fun about it. The armor thing I don't mind. The armor thing I don't mind, but I mind the... Uh... <laughs> Fuck. The armor thing I wouldn't mind, but... The stupid ass naturalized infinite loop is what really did it, right? That's the main component. Maybe you wouldn't even need that much armor to do it because how much damage did you really take? Well, I guess it just seems inconsequential next to the insane armor total. So let's change the whole quest thing there. That's like the perfect counter thing. I was so excited that we might be able to do it. Uh, let's get rid of the dude there. So what do we want instead then? You want... Not even anything that relates to the hero power. Like, just, like, what is actually just a good card to have? Like... I don't know why I'm so obsessed with Divine Favor. I just feel... Or, yeah, it's just, like, sort of card draw overall. It's the only thing I can think of. Uh, draw a holy spell. Scan the bottom five cards. Draw any mechs found this way. Then shuffle your deck. Uh, draw a minion... Draw a minion, give minions in your hand, plus one, plus one. Let me do one of them just to try it, but... Draw a spell. What is this again? Uh, give minions in your hand, plus one, plus one. Uh, what minion would it be that I really want, though? I don't know. I don't know. None of this shit is too impressive. I kind of want Octasari or some shit for this, all things considered. I need something that makes me draw, like, multiple cards, actually. I'll do one of the Murlocs, I guess. Okay, let's do one more, and clearly between those two losses, our bubble would have re cooled down, so that's why it should count for multiple, but yeah, normally I don't do it like that, unless there is really only one deck to go between, or like if the twist mode's not really that interesting, or if it's not even available, like they have that cooldown between them, like, for a month, where you just, the twist this month is that there is no twist, like just, 
hatred of 10,000 years. I feel like I rarely have ever seen that one, if ever. See, now all we would need is the, uh... All we would need is the Uther. Or even, again, that card that re... Okay, there you go. So now we should win this game. Because we, we start with both... We Uther, Auctioneer, and a coin. So we would just need two more coins and just to get to turn nine. So unless I just lose before that. But even though it's a bit of a top-heavy loaded hand, that's about as perfect as a start as you can possibly have. Not only do you get your two win condition cards, but you also start with a fucking free coin. Is that even the right way? War Rider. Wouldn't it be enough to just put W-A-R? Why does it need a second R? That doesn't even seem right. I thought it was written War Rider, like in one... Okay, now we just need to survive the early game, which against the Demon Hunter. Oh, look at him flexing his Legend card back to a bronze rank 7. But it clear clearly just means our matchups are fucked up, like... Uh, you know, we could be playing against somebody at actual Legend right now, just... Who's, uh, they should really update that one. Even if they don't give it to people who have the Legend card back, they just... They could just give it to people who... Get it from now on, still. Like a 3D one that looks better, or they never made one for Wild. Which I always said the Ungoro card back should be that. Because it has the vines, and it has the orange thing in the middle that kind of looks the same as this. Or whatever, it, it just looks like it could have easily been that. And then now for twist mode, they can have another one. But yeah, everybody always makes fun of this because it just doesn't look that good. The old treetop fruit psychological ideation effect, like where it only might seem cool is because you associate the accomplishment of getting it. So like something could look really shitty, but be hard to get. So people still like it or something could look really good, but everybody has it and it's easy to get. So therefore it doesn't look very, you know, you don't really think of it that highly. So that's exactly what I was saying with like the legion effect like oh everybody gets the Ashbringer so now it no longer feels like it anymore. It doesn't feel like a big deal. Oh look at him try harding dude. <sighs> Roping on turn two you got to make sure you make the legend caliber plays huh. And this one kind of does fit with the you know, the whole Death Knight vibe that we're doing, I guess. But yeah, all we have to do is survive, but some of these turns are going to be pretty much dead plays. So we need to get the other two coins. Now we're going to get fucked on that aspect, but we have a lot of cards that give us coins, right? At least like four of them, and then the burly bully guy too, who sometimes will give you one. So we only need two of them. I don't know why I felt like you somehow needed more before, but like originally when you played this, but you really didn't. You only needed three, but they were a lot harder to get because you maybe only had the questing adventure guy to do it. Because at least the bully they can try to prevent. You're not guaranteed to get one from that, but you might. I always just never really liked Demon Hunters. In fact, I don't really like Demon Hunters or Death Knights, given the fact that... Uh... It's a little bit problematic. Like, there's just nothing I can even do. And you wouldn't dare to use the coin in any other suboptimal way. And yeah, this one's in there just as like a filler thing that we've never won because of that once, or we've never even really seen it be possible for me to win because of that. You just don't get to that point. In a way, it's almost a bad thing because it just gets in the way of you drawing the other cards that you really want. Now we need like consecration, consecration or some shit. Divine favor is usually not going to be good, but if all you have left in your hands are the coins, then maybe it could be okay. Like in a really bad situation, like, but you you know when you're designing one of these win condition decks, you never really think in the worst case. You assume the best case, like. You never want to be in that situation or you're going to lose anyway, so... Like, you know, if you don't have Beardo, you don't have Uthru, you don't have anything, you just play everything and you just keep the coins or maybe you play those too even. I'll put the Gadgets and Auctioneer in here just to spam the coins to try to draw a bunch just to, you know, get to the cards, but then you're wasting the coins that you're going to need. 
But no, there's probably a lot of ways to do this now. Like, in fact, you never really needed too many coins. You could just use a secret, right? Do a coin, do a secret, do a, another secret. Like, you would have enough mana to do it that way, too. So maybe the obsession with the coins is a bit superfluous. You could just save some of your secrets for it. We'll do this just to try to get some stable position on the board. But we really need Consecration or something to just keep us alive. Some of the card draw I have isn't really the best, but... I'm just intimidated by this guy because he clearly is a legend player, but that doesn't mean anything at all. Anybody by now who could get it, it's like having Ashes of Alar, right, in 2024, 23, whenever I did my session riding around, right, last year. <laughs> That's the perfect analogy. Like, anybody who wants it can have it now. It's not a big deal because you could just farm it out. Like, getting the legend at one point ever in the history of the game is not a big deal. Now, if there was a let, that's another one they should have done. They needed a wild card back. They need wild legend card back. They need a twist card back. Legend, they need a legend rank one card back, right? That very few people would have. That looks a little better. That's always a good excuse to update it too. Even if there's no new legend card back, period, there should be a legend rank one card back just pure overall, right? Because there otherwise, there's no incentive to even get it. Just like bragging rights, but nobody would even know, right? That's absolutely something they should have. This is a really tough spot to be in because even though we started with seemingly the dream hand <laughs> that uh i don't know maybe he's just expecting that i'll have something better than what i do but or some other plan which i guess i kind of do but some of this stuff just shouldn't even be in there you know doing all this gimmick decory i've never uh you know, I guess there might not even be an outline for some of these, but I've never, like, net decked anything like, oh, I could just try to make the best Uther deck in 2024, but I don't really even want to do that. The best Exodia Uther thing. But it's not even the best always that I'm going for. It's often just the best within the gimmick, like, within a rule set, which here, I can't come up with a really good rule set. It's just all random stuff. It was so easy with the shaman. Like everything has to be evolved, transformed, copy, you know, just very directly related to that. So we need consecrate very badly, and I just don't have it. Short. Do I maybe not have another one or I should have wild pyromancer or some shit? Sometimes you wish this was just the opposite, like just make their attack one and then I might not even care about killing them. Or no, I'll just have to play Baron Rivendare for the gimmick that he is. I mean, I'd be willing to do it. There's just nothing I can do, like it's so stupid. Okay, okay. That just shows you how desperate I am, but I mean, I'm just in top deck mode. Maybe it'll buy us time to get Consecrate. It, you know, I would need the two more coins, but I would also need, uh, you know, to be able to play this. So I would need one more turn, which normally it'll give you like 10 health just by giving you the armor and letting you hit face for five with the lifesteal. So that is a pretty good play in and of itself, but... I just can't even dump my cards to be able to play this, so I don't see why I would even have that in there. I mean, I at least saw the win condition a couple times, but I wasn't really too pleased by it. But look how long this even takes, too. Like, this is a longer session than normal, and I've only gotten to brands, bronze rank 7. And I have gotten a couple good wins, but... I don't know what to do here. I just need Consecrate, like if I don't get it. Even if I do get it, I might be screwed. Kind of sad because I started with such a good thing. Right, you get both of your car main cards that you need. You may very well have to do this, I mean... Even if I did it, I don't think... I think I'm still dead because if you just attack with that... Yeah, I'm still dead because you'll hit 4, 8, 12, 
Whatever, I'm still dead. And now I wasted the one coin that I have, so maybe it's the bad karma that, oh, you know, I got rid of some of the coin cards and now I'm fucked, but that's not even still really what it came down to. It, oh, wow, bro. Okay, but why the fuck do you have Till and Yeti anyway? Holy shit, bro, what a play, but there's just nothing I can do about it either. So... You could put what I mean, let, let me think. You could put Wild Pyromancer, you could put uh, just more cards to stall it out and make the game last longer because you're just losing in situations like this, maybe too much. What a play, though. I thought I was dead even if he didn't do that, but I guess even with it, I mean, this is a very impactful card. You just got to build around uh, stalling the game out more, surviving longer. Just like a normal good deck, which I'm not used to making anymore, but or that's not even my intent. Behind. Okay, okay, dude. I mean, now it doesn't matter because you can just attack with the thing. Divine Favor is really gonna... I don't think I've heard too many of her voice lines, actually, right? That is so fucking frustrating, bro. We had the chance to be the Armored Druid, but then, you know, we lose Beardo right when we need it at most, and then we get the perfect starting hand, but then we lose to some legend tryhard, presumably, who for some reason has Chill and Yeti and some random shit. Doesn't mean they're using something really good right now, but obviously, it's still good. Or he did that just to get the get me to one on purpose, I guess. Or maybe he didn't have a choice, whatever. But yeah, that is a little disappointing. I can't really think too much of what to even change in this. I could add Wild Pyromancer. I could add... Uh... I don't know. That's so fucking stupid. Maybe there should be a three strike rule, but I almost want to do another one now. Let's do one more just to... That was such a perfect hand. Like, I don't get it. What better thing could I fucking get? Because all these other cards suck. Like, okay, like, double equality is good. How many two-cost cards do I even have? I do have a decent amount where... You'll get some from that, you'll get some from that. I don't mind giving my opponent a coin. Everything is just so situational, like... You know, I could have another Cold Light Oracle. I don't know, I'll just stick with it for now. Maybe next time I'll try to... I always get lazy with trying to iterate on them. I did a little bit in the, fir in the first episode last time, but then... Now I just don't even really feel like it. Again, it's not always about quality, but it's about the cohesion behind what I'm trying to do. So we get Beardo and we get that. So. What that means is, we still need, obviously, two more coins, but we also need the other dude, the uh, Uther, which you could get from the other card that I just always keep blanking on the name, that reorder my deck from highest to lowest. I wouldn't do it yet, but, you know, anytime you want, then you can just get it. The problem I think we've run into is we faced at least a couple good decks, or at least decks with some idea behind them. You could get fucked over too with this because you, uh, you know, if you get this just at the wrong time and you've already played both of those. But you have other two cost cards, like even a quality. What do you get from the end of this? You get five armor and then you get Feral Frenzy. Gain six attack with your hero, Gruff the Tough. All right, so you can just do that. So we already have two out of three coins. We already have Beardo. So now the problem with that last game was the issue of even getting to the point where I could play them. Even if I did have the coins, I just died before I could even play with her. So 
they're obsessed with these little side quests that they have. Hearthstone is the one game where people can say they've actually read all the quest text because it's not actually that long. Really? It's Draw a minion. Okay, that's gonna be fine. I don't really care about his statting, obviously. You only play him as the final kill. But again, any of the things that would counter this potentially aren't even really gonna be present because yes, they could play Dirty Rad. Yes, they could play Gnome Ferratu or some shit. But it's just not gonna be super common or it's not always gonna get what they want here. We have adequate quality consecrate shit going on here, but Okay, that's fine. Let's just do this though. Like what is it that I As long as I don't burn my cards, but like they could naturalize and fuck me over just like the last person did, the last druid, but that was more extreme because they were playing like a million of them. We need approximately one more coin. And the one thing that people always tell me to use that I don't like is like a deck tracker. I guess I could show it on stream for people's benefit, but I don't... It, not only do I consider it cheating, but it objectively is cheating. Like you, if you were at a tournament, you couldn't do that, right? Or if you're at an over-the-board event, keeping track of what's in your deck and how to play around that or whatever is a key part of the game. Like... We could just do a regular Consecrate and almost kill everything. Right, maybe I should do it that way, where I don't even bother using a quality. We could do that stupid washer thing to try to heal. I could try to do, uh... Zola the Gorgon's not too big of a deal right now. Some of these copy things maybe aren't even needed, because, like, what am I doing? I'll make a copy of, a. Uh... You can just replace them with other better cards. Card draw. We could still do it, but they're definitely very impressive with the amount of... Uh... Now maybe I'll have to quality concentrate just for that alone. Like, how else do I do this? You could do this, but that's kind of dangerous. Let's just do it. Wait, wh what happened? Wait, was I just imagining or they got rid of it somehow and I wasn't paying attention, I guess? Uh, okay, fine. I fucked up. Are you even doing that? I'm probably just dead. They must have gotten rid of it or I must have already played it and I'm just not paying any attention at all. This is what I mean. No deck tracker, but I can't even keep track of my hand that I can see. But no, like it's it's a, it's like in poker, right? You can't count cards or you can, but it, you have to do it all mentally. But it's all a case of... Uh... Oh, we get it again anyway, but... Uh, gain six armor, that's fine. This is all beautiful, but there is a particular card that I'm waiting for, and now I'm not going to get it in time, I guess. Right, it's just annoying. 8-8. Eight, eight. Give your hero... Wait, what? Bro, this person loves getting fucking attacked. At least we have something on the board that you can actually... It's dangerous to leave myself with that threshold of health, too, but I'll just do it anyway. You get rid of this. You have the two attack thing. I don't have the true silver champion to heal me. Why I even have this in my deck is a big question, too. Man, this one kind of disappoints me because even when you win, it's not that fun. And even when you don't, it's just dumb. Like, it's too kind of structured. Right? It's too much against what a gimmick deck typically is about. Which is anything but a win condition. I just can't think of any other one or any other way to do it, so... Throw your health. Okay, fine. We do get the coin, so it's over if I just get Uther. Although it would still take a turn, but... That's for like, oh, just use timeout. But it doesn't matter because... You won't be able to play it in the same turn that you play Uther anyway. You have to rely on the healing just from the armor and the lifesteal. No 
I just need like a lot of oh wow oh wow Wait, why would you do it like that though? Why wouldn't you hit that and then hit my face? Or wait, what? Oh, okay, I'm forgetting my own effect. Or now I'm, uh, now I'm gonna burn it because he's gonna... That's one downside of the bully is that you can kind of play into that too much. Okay, now we would be guaranteed to get Uther, but there's no way to guarantee that I actually... Okay, I'm gonna do this just for the healing. Or maybe... Put your faith in the light. Maybe not. Eight cards, like they would have to play multiple things that the bully. Oh shit, they're gonna fuck me. They're gonna fuck me. I lose. They're gonna play like two spells. Fuck, I should have made sure that guy died. Right, they're gonna be guaranteed to play at least two spells regardless of what happens. And I'm not gonna win in like a normal. Oh, they're gonna be dumb. They're gonna be dumber than I just was, even. Right, because you had to know what that play would mean, or maybe you don't know, but... Don't do it, dude! Don't do it! If you play another song, I'm fucked. Oh, shit, you... It had to work out just perfectly, didn't it? So now, it should be very unlikely. Okay. Let's do that, then. I'm forgetting to even use these. Give your minions... Uh... I forgot to even do that. So now next turn we just win, so we do get it. That was very close, but the one thing is that this one can definitely hurt you. <laughs> and you just have too many fucking cards, or coins, it's a good problem to have, but over half your hand is a fucking coin. This almost, when you look at the inscription around the side, you're almost thinking of like the one ring or something. But no, I still wouldn't have much of a chance to win on the board, right? It's only going to be the win condition that does it. You will beg for mercy, and I will deny you. Like, there should be mathematically nothing you can possibly do here, but... I've been wrong before. I guess I underestimate how good that effect is because they just didn't have removal for her. Uh, so often that she's just gone immediately that you never even see the effect come into play. Right, of the two damage thing. I wish that's just how carry will work. You can't take more than two at a time. Now you do the thing, or the only way you could fuck this up is if you block the board. Like you don't have enough room on the board, but... We could kill off this dude if I really had to, but it's fine. Yeah, we at least end off with the proper four horsemen thing. Animation is pretty nice. Yeah, it's just so, so much more awkward sometimes to get it than what you'd really expect that I don't... Let me try to briefly just make another one. Like, let's just make it fresh and see if we just stay truly focused only on the win condition. Right. What would we actually get? And the answer is, I have no fucking idea, but... Like, let me just think through it once, based on what we at least have. You would get, like, a bunch of card draw. Uh, number one. I don't care about that to do with a coin. Okay, two equality for sure. Two consecrate for sure. And then maybe, again, that did come into play there, but it's just too much work to try to do it. That just has to do with mech, so it's not really going to matter. Cover a dragon, you got two of these. I don't even want divine favor, it's dumb, it's never going to come into play. Yeah, this is in there just for the fun factor that did actually win me a couple of games for sure. Even though that's exactly what I was just saying I shouldn't do. One of those is probably enough. You rarely are going to get a chance to play both. Um, I guess I'll do one of those. Some of this is just like I don't have everything that I'd really want. Uh, that's the earthen thing that's going to take too long. For each fountain card in your hand, you have a friendly minion plus two plus two. Uh... Whenever your hero attacks a minion, set the stats to 3-3. Three, three. 
one of these things just for the fuck of it. Resurrect two, three, and four from your class. This has obviously been very instrumental. This is okay. Add a copy of each spell. You cast some friendly minions. This came to your hand. Your deck has no neutral cards. I mean, so far it doesn't, but... I mean, these can just be good sometimes, period. Colossal, one, rush, divine shield. Uh, after this attack, draw a card. I, I guess. I don't know. Deal three damage to each enemy minion. Cost one less for each enemy minion. I don't know about that. It ends up being basically the same shit that we already had. So, again, just sort of things to draw stuff out or draw it out in two ways that we just need card draw, but also drag the game out. Uh, what, what did we even have in here? How did we fill in 14 fucking slots? Uh, this one we don't want. We want the other guy that's going to be this one. And we get to see what else do we want. Again, a lot of this doesn't even have to relate to the theme, but... You know, maybe I should do that. I think one would probably be enough. Or we were even doing stupid stuff with the thing. With like the brewmasters, but I almost don't even want that. Like, the whole thing is, too, you don't really need the coin, so maybe this is what I'm underestimating. Right, like, why not do this? You could mathematically, you have 10 mana, you play 2, so you're down to 8, then you go back to not, or, no, wait. You have 8, then you play a banana, so assume you have 1 coin, so you go to 9, then you play another one, so now you're at 7, then you go to 6, 5, 4, then 3, 2, 1. Like, you unironically could just do it in a fucking banana perspective. You wouldn't need, you know, you wouldn't need that alone. I would just do it for the troll factor, I guess, too. Do one of those. What am I missing now? This is more just, like, laziness than it is actual gimmickry, right? At least I'm pretty true to it most of the time, but... This one just isn't doing me any favors. I don't know why I need Zola and all that shit. It's never gonna matter. I'm just at a loss for like anything remotely decent to put in here. Uh, the bully is okay at times, I guess. Even though it almost just fucked me up and single-handedly lost me the game. Almost lost me the game. Uh, this would have been great if it actually wasn't the highest cost minion and it was just the highest cost card. Right then I would certainly have it for the guy. Which is the whole reason why I have order in the court. Totally didn't have to look at the name to remember it. This thing again, just for the gimmickry fuck of it, fine. There's so much concern with AoE that I have with this one that I always just need it. That we end up having to have a quality like 10 times over between the other chick and stuff. So what we could do now is you could just, uh... We had Marin the Fox in here for some stupid ass reason too. Or not even Marin the Fox, the other guy. Choose a fantastic treasure, shuffle three other in your deck. It's good just for the fun of it, but... Ragnaros... Um... They kind of fucked up Molten Giant too. You know, we'll just do it anyway, and then we'll- I guess we could do the Brewmaster, or... We could do one Brewmaster and then Zola. I don't think the four cost one is really too special. Let's do, like, maybe one more. Let's do it with that just to see the difference. But yeah, by that logic, oh, we're- we're RPing that if we run out of bubbles and we lose a game, then we have to stop playing. So, like, every- what was the cooldown, really? Just at 1.10 minutes, so... You know... If every game lasts 10 minutes, then you'll be guaranteed to play no matter what. Because you could just bubble every single time. Like, dueling people and being allowed to bubble. Or even being more degenerate and lay, lay on hands. Uther versus Uther. I will fight with honor. I will we get the coin and we get the... But see, it's almost like I shouldn't worry about that. Because even though I may need it later... Right, I should just look for Beardo and then we can figure it out, or maybe that's not how you should think, but... Like, this this is gonna be completely useless in this game now, because we already have Uther, so it's hard to really say. Well met. So, wasn't there a Paladin hero that's actually, like, the Headless Horseman guy for some reason? So, that was one that I actually liked. 
Or maybe it doesn't make sense. It, it would be make more sense to be the Death Knight. Or maybe it's like Headless Horseman Uther with some sort of extrapolation like that. Yeah, this is very disorganized and again, not in the fun way. But yeah, like this card literally is objectively useless to me. Right, there's no reason you would ever want to do it. So two out of three coins. So we need two more things. We need one more coin. We don't even need it. We could use a card like that, right? You could, you would have 10, 9, 8, then 9, then 7, then 8, 6, and then you could do this, and then you could do it again. You could do anything, right? The only point is that you need Beardo. And we really haven't gotten any fucking value out of this, dude. Uh, we have Pyromancer, we have Consecration, we have all kind of shit. <laughs> that we could do. You know, it's smarter not to do that because, oh, you open yourself up to Consecration, so you'd rather get... Well, I guess it doesn't matter, but... Yeah, we can very easily get rushed down. We can very easily lose on the board. Right, so now Consecration is fine, but we're not going to get it. We may as well just do it because we don't have anything going for us here. This dude is a fucking just absolute noose around my neck though. It's not been useful to me at all. It's just not something that even if it did synergize, it's still been completely useless. It's not even that it's getting silenced or something. It's just too slow. Not that the whole deck isn't a little bit slow too, but... We have very bad board presence because even a lot of the minions we play are just to get the coin or, you know, they're not really something we want to actually actively play. You know, we're making a copy, but for like what purpose? Like you can try to win with the horseman like that, but it ends up not really being very meaningful. But it cuts down on at least one point that you need, but it ends up being basically the same thing. So that telegraphs that maybe I do have Consecration and I just didn't have enough mana, but I would have had enough. Or just that I didn't want to do it. Ah, uh, yes, of course. We'll win just because the AFK is out. Fucking stupid. Right, I mean, we have the Pyromancer shit too, for what it's worth. I don't know. Now I'm gonna want to do another one. I, I want to do like one more proper game. Where it's actually like a little bit competitive with this actual deck. Okay, fine. At least that makes it quick. Let's do one more. I'm gonna go on a crazy win streak to bronze rank five. We got to get at least five ranks every episode like I would try to do in PvZ Heroes. But <laughs> this is the kind of casual level that we're at. You know, at least we've gotten to play it a number of times, so it's not that hard as you might think. It's just too random based. Or it's not really fun. Randomness can be fun in a different way, like, oh, Renounced Darkness, how come I like that? But, so now, you just dig for Uther, don't even worry about the coin, even though that could pose a problem later. This War Rider is like a fucking card game cock block. This is my desire to try to, oh, look at me. It's like when I do the Imp deck, you know, oh, it, I'm going to play Galakrond with some, you know, 2022 uh, Castle Nathria Imp Portal deck. Galakrond has nothing to do with it, but I do it, do it anyway. Just like, oh, it has to do with Imp. So there you go. Like, that's the same principle here. Like, oh, it has to do with the Four Horsemen. So let's just do it. But it has nothing to do with that. Or again, maybe it does. I still don't know. But I'm assuming it, it's not. They're just different names. But when it says the horsemen, it's pretty vague, right? Which horsemen? There's, you know, they're the same ones. They're just different subtitles. It doesn't say anywhere what the name of them has to be. It 
See, now, for example, all we would need is that order in the court, and we could get Uther from that. Again, you do have a two... You know, like, you have 30 cards in your deck, 25 cards. Every turn, you have a two and three chance. Not two and three, but two and whatever chance to get it. If you have 20 cards, you have a 10% chance every turn to get it, one or, one or the other. That's why you should mulligan a little harder for... No, I mean, you should mulligan hard for both, basically. Just mulligan your whole... What the fuck? Mulligan your whole hand every time just for one or the other, which would be a pretty common standard that you would do anyway with respect to... Uh... Okay, this should be the last one. I just want to play like a proper game that plays out where I actually get the win condition or at least whatever, lose in spite of trying to. Uther versus Uther. I will fight with honor. Okay, so we should just get rid of this whole hand. Call it Ar Oracle can be fine. Again, I don't really even care about the coins. I feel like I'll get them when I need to or I'll get something else. Even when a two cost fuck. Even when like a two cost card fills in this the space. But you don't always need every single coin. If you have like two coins and a two cost card, or whatever, a secret and a coin and something else. You might play this sometimes just for as I'm used to doing in like the Iron Juggernaut deck, you might play it just for board presence. Just to try to keep up. We get rid of Cariel just to get her back, but... He's been good, the Titan's been good, but it's just not really... Still anything to do with it, right? It's just to help you survive and drag it out. Nice, dude. Yeah, th this game goes down as still the best one in terms of like the amount of personality that they always put into it Even if a lot of that you ended up having to pay for like with the heroes and stuff You still get to see them on the other side and Of course, I always have good nostalgic memories of the tower even though this looks a little different than Really what I'm imagining just because I was always a mage and I would always portal back and I mean everybody would end up there, but it's especially From a portal, but it's especially meaningful with the thing when you are a mage because you're doing it all the time. But every class had such good identity where there were certain things they could do and couldn't do, right? You can make free food for people and you can make portals and somebody else can uh, bubble and lay on hands and stuff. And somebody else can onk and somebody and become a wolf and somebody else can... Wow. I mean, it's very easy to get fucked over like this. Like, we're losing to these kind of decks more than anything. Okay, maybe one more, even after this. No, but this is supposed to be the last one. Just fuck it. We're, we lost. This is maybe a bad showing, though, for Paladin overall. Just not, not objectively because, oh, the deck is bad. It's objectively, like, because... Like, there's nothing really that fun that I can think of. It's kind of surprising. Even the quest was not in there because I was actually trying to do it. Okay, we'll, we'll do last one, last one. Uh, just like really, every other class I've had an easy time coming up with something. Even with some of them, I'm coming up with my own interpretation that's not really even a... It, it wasn't even any sort of uh, semblance of a deck at any point, like the anti-spell druid. That's not a real thing, but I just kind of make it because you have Tyrantus and you have uh, whatever. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm talking about. RNG Fiesta over here, but again, it doesn't mean we're going to win because we did just lose that one. We just have to get to turn nine and we just have to get a few coins. Like, And again, I, I have yet to really lose a game because the coins have been the issue, right? It's either Beardo or Uther that we don't get. I've never really complained about not having enough of the coin people. In fact, I was complaining at the beginning about having too many of them. Like, even the burly bully guy has a certain value to it. But the only one that we're missing out on is the quest one. And the reason why is because... Uh, 
we're missing out on the quest one because of the simple fact that we don't have the quest and we don't feel like we really need that because we have enough of other cards. But combining that on top of everything else is obviously makes it overkill. And again, you can just have other low cost spells, which maybe I don't always think of it like that. Only way this could have been better is if you had the starting coin too, which you're kind of rubbing in my face. Clearly means they're using a good legend caliber fucking deck. <clears throat> I should always still look at the shop in case there's some cool hero that I want to waste more money on, but I don't really. I'm just happy I got an Azoth finally, which maybe makes the people feel dumb. Like, haha, joke's on you. I waited four years or however long by not pre-ordering that, and then I ended up getting it anyway, but... Oh, wait. But that's the one unique thing about Hearthstone, too, that's maybe not a positive or a negative, but it doesn't have, like, proper phases. So in most games, you couldn't do something like that. You would have to play that first and do the effect, but you can just do things in any order, which is kind of hard to imagine how that didn't pose issues for them, but from a desi design standpoint, like, you can just do whatever you want whenever you want. <laughs> this is not a bad position at all. It's just takes me forever. Sometimes I should do this. Maybe I should have done true silver champion, honestly. You should be able to choose which one you get from this too. Like there's all the different appearances, but or it's like based on which starting hero you have, but that wouldn't even be right because this one wasn't the original one or maybe they just redid it overall. So they got rid of the other one, but I feel like you still see it in some other way, like from other cards that summon it. Bro's literally gonna lose to a fucking banana over here. Like, there you go. The coin condition's already done because that's all you need. Or you need, like, one coin on top of it. But, like, that's literally a legitimate way to do it. <laughs> because... Again, you have 10 mana. You play one, you play the thing. You're down to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Then you could just play the coin and do another one. So you, it's not even a mana issue. It's just a, another spell issue. But I guess if you had another banana, it wouldn't work because it would take you down to one. You can have two one cost cards and one coin. So we have the stupid ass equality consecrate. Which we don't really even need to do. What if we just do regular Consecrate? Uh, no, you know what? Let's do it because then we can attack in. Kill this, kill this, and then do it. Clearly next level play. So now can I actually get to the point where we get... Really, we don't even need anything. We just need to survive. Yeah, the number of those kind of equality consecrate equivalent plays that we get are insane. Like even with the Titan, she makes everything a two cost, then we would flip it back to our hand, or like make a copy with Zola and then do it again. It's like we're stalling out the game with stuff that what the fuck? That was a mistake. What the fuck, dude? I've heard of curved plays, but this is getting ridiculous, dude. Now even if we get one coin from that, we're already done, bro. And timeout is pretty perfect timing here, too. But now it's just a question of being able to play Uther. Like, I keep playing so much with this one, too, now, because it's like... I don't want to end because we lose in an unsatisfying way, or we win in an unsatisfying way. Like, either they quit out, or it feels like a bot. But whatever, this is the last one for sure. And I clearly am going to win. So what you need now is just to survive out for a little bit. But no, we're gonna do it with the bananas as the ultimate troll. I should have whacked you in the face with that anyway, but... Like, beating that armor druid would have been legendary because all you would have needed is the Beardo, and I already had the win. Right, but then you go on the naturalized chain bullshit. It could have been billion armor druid, it could have been anything, it wouldn't have mattered. 
it is satisfying when you see something like that. Oh, like, they have this, you know... They have this mechanic that they're so confident they can't possibly lose, but then you're playing one thing that actually... I mean, I guess it's more common now that there'd be more decks like that, but... You bypass that whole expectation. Now you play the dude and it's actually just over. That's perfect. Now we actually get to troll you with the bananas on top of anything else because unless my math is wrong, or no, it is wrong because you have to play Beardo, duh. You play, you play two, you're down to eight. Then you play Beardo, you're down to five. Then you play the coin, you're up to six, then you're down to four. Then you play the banana, you are down to three, then you're down to one. So you need, I guess you need maybe one more coin if I, okay. You're at 10, right? So 10 to 8 to 5, then to then to 4, 3, 2, then to 1. So you, yeah, you, wait, I can't figure it out. You're at 10 mana, right? <laughs> you're at 10, you play the hero power, you're at 8. Then you go down to five, right? Okay, so you're at five from Beardo, and you have one of those. Then you play one coin, you get to six. Or pretend you don't have the coin. So then you're the banana to four, then two, then one. So you, yeah, you need at least one coin, which I have though. Oh, I don't know. I should just do it. Let me just do it. I'll win even without it, but I can't do the math. No, you should be able to do it. Or no, you won't be able to do it. Uh... Okay, so you need at least two, uh... Oh, and I fucked up the ability to do this too. Oh, should I? <laughs> she did my math wrong. Um, so you would have needed, like, uh, they're still not going to be able to deal with it somehow. You needed, like, another coin. So that's actually weird. Why did that not work? You play two, you get down to eight. Then you play Beardo, you get down to five. Then you play the coin, you get up to six, down to four. Right? Then you play from four, you play the banana, three to two. So you need two coins. Two coins and then any one cost spell, like a secret or a banana or some shit. You're not. Which maybe makes the banana guy not really so good to have in here, but it's still a worthy troll. Like, we're still gonna win, or you're gonna be too dumb to actually... Whether you're a person or a bot, the bot is too dumb to actually do this. Disappointing. Oh wow, I don't think I remember hearing that. That must be new. I guess I could BM you out, but who really cares? But, you know, clearly that proves it's a bot, because who wouldn't at least try to trade into those? So even when I fuck up, that's the true BM, not the banana, but that. But yeah, you actually need two coins no matter what. So you only need one, I guess, if you start with a coin, though. Like, one extra that you have to generate. Okay, see you tomorrow.